regular watch enthusiasts. Now today I have a review of a watch which was sent to me, and this is a manually wound Swiss made a dress watch of the ultra slim style. Now that sounds like rather a, a lot of watch for the price tag of £699, but I'd like to, to talk you through this watch because it was sent to me by the brand um, and, and I must say I originally was, uh, well like, I'm, like, like I am when I'm always uh, approached by brands, somewhat questioning of, uh, of the, the way the watch is manufactured, the styling cues and the quality behind it. But having handled this watch and, uh, and tried it on and so on, I am very much confident on saying that I would, I would definitely recommend this watch to viewers. Um, and of course I'm not being paid to say this, this is very much a review because I think this watch is, is good quality and is worthwhile. So this watch comes in a, in a rather nicely uh, lacquered uh, wooden box, it's this light wood, um, and I must say it, it, it is a very nice finish for this price. Now there is again their, their logo, which is this, uh, this, this retro futuristic uh, style of, of V. Which is, uh, which is very much in keeping with the design of their watches, which are inspired by 1950s watches, while having a, a very futuristic flair to them. Now inside the box, one finds this beautifully slim, manually wound Swiss-made dress watch. Now, this is the watch itself. I'll just put it to one side while I go and put away the box and, uh, and get the, the, the watch directly underneath the camera. So here is the watch in question. And as you can see, this is a very, very classic aesthetic which, as the Pals say, is a 1950s style. However, there are certain details like the hands that do draw this watch into the 21st century, and, and I think do match the name of the, the 20, uh, 2050, um, being a sort of a uh, 100 years on from those 1950s dress watches. Now, the case of this watch is 38 millimeters from side to side, and it's a circular style with these, these lugs, which are, I suppose, pseudo wire lugs on the basis they curve round rather than jutting out and then having a spring bar in between. Now, they do have a spring bar in between, but it is clearly um, uh, integrated into the design of this. Now, the dimensions of the watch are, as I've said, 38 millimetres from side to side, but it has a very large crystal and large dial, meaning the dial is the same size as a watch uh, of the dive watch category of 43 and a half, 44 millimetres, due to the fact there's so little metal around the edge. Now, there's a polished bezel around the edge of the, this large crystal, um, but that certainly doesn't get in the way of uh, obstructing this watch if you want to wear it with a, a dress cuff, for example. Now, the dimensions of this watch in terms of depth really do show uh, what, a, what a good dress watch this is. Now, because this watch is powered by a Solita SW215, which is the, uh, I suppose, a clone of the ETA 2804-2, uh, which is their manually wound movement, um, this watch does have a, a very slim profile. Now, the case is, is uh, 6.85mm from the top of the bezel to the case back, meaning it's extremely slim in that respect. But there, it'll, it is 9.85mm, uh, sorry, 9.65mm from the top of the crystal to the case back. Now, that does mean that there is a certain thickness, but it's still much thinner than even many of my dress watches. Um, and due to the, the careful stepping on the edge of the case, there really is no problem with regard to slipping this under the cuff. Now we also have these drop down lugs which fit, which fit around the wrist very nicely and which I'll show you when I, when I put this watch on to, to give you a wrist shot at the end of the video. Now you, you can also notice this uh, very nicely uh, etched engraving on the side of the crown. And this is quite a deep engraving, it's not, not a simple laser etching, which is something I appreciate when a great deal of brands uh, don't go to the trouble of, of having a well made um, uh, etching on the, on the crown due to the fact that it's such a small part. Around the front of the, 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 the watch, rather, we do have the, the wonderful detail being the dial. Now this dial is, and I'm not sure if you can see in this light, but it is a, a sunburst grey. Now this watch comes in a number of colours, but, but I thought the grey would be the one which would, uh, would interest you the most, on the basis that, in my opinion, it, it's the most different. Now it has these gold accents around the dial, including the, the, um, uh, the Swiss made writing at the bottom, and incidentally this watch is Swiss made. It also has a power simply placed at 12 o'clock, which is very nicely balanced out by the date being at 6 o'clock, giving a, a very rounded design to, to the, uh, the dial, meaning that this watch doesn't look un uh, unbalanced in any way, has no imbalance in terms of the styling, whereas a lot of watches have the date placed over here um, at 3 o'clock. I do prefer having it at 6 o'clock, like, for example, my Oris Aquis. Now, the dial features these, these straight batten uh, painted indices around the dial, which I think suit the low-key style of dial um, very nicely. And then we have loom uh, at the, the four uh, quadrants, I suppose, of the dial, 
Uh, but I'll show you that later on because that's something which surprised me immensely about this watch. It's the fact this watch has remarkably good loom. Now we then have, uh, if we look at the edges of the dial, we have the, the, the minutes written around the edge of the dial, um, which is almost reminiscent of Nomos in terms of its, uh, its, its consideration um, for this, uh, this detail. Now, like the, the, the markings on the dial, the hands are gold, um, and they're, they're these gilded hands uh, in this paddle shape. Now, these watches are also available if you buy the 1950 rather than the 2050, with the uh, with uh, sword or, or um, uh, well, yes, pointed style hands, which are more true to the originals. But I must say, I do rather like these hands because they they put a different spin on this watch um, entirely. Now, the second hand is a simple straight hand with a, a counterweight in this uh, uh, this sort of tang on the back of it, which I must say I appreciate because it does uh, balance out the hand better than having, for example, a, tr a straight point on the back of it. The hands are these uh, these paddle style hands, and I do rather like them because they allow for the elegance of having a straight hand while also incorporating loom and making a feature of it, um, which is again something I appreciate. And if I'm utterly honest, this watch has the best loom on any of the dress watches I've seen, um, which which is quite something really. I wouldn't consider my Tudor to be a dress watch on the basis that though it's uh, discreet enough to be a dress watch, it certainly is an ex exploration watch at, at heart. Now, as I've said, the date is, is a matched colour to that sunburst dial um, and is placed at six o'clock. Now, I, I do appreciate the fact they haven't put a rim around the, this, though uh, as far as, a, 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 I suppose, a, um, a constructive criticism, it would have been nice to see some bevelling around that date um, to, to, to allow for a, a more clear um, a division, I suppose, between the dial and that date wheel. Now, the strap this watch comes on is... In this case, a, a beautiful velour style leather um, of, uh, of strap. Remarkably difficult to focus on, as it turns out. Um, I'll just try and get that into focus for you. There we are. Now, it's this grey colour, and it's, it's beautifully finished to be very, very soft. And as you can see, this watch is, is this strap is, it isn't broken in. I made a point of not breaking in this strap at all um, to give you a good idea of how, how supple it is. This really is uh, one of the softest straps, and this is French calf leather, um, and uh, and I must say is is of superb quality. Um, and I must say, what's most impressed me about this watch is that often with their first few watches, these smaller brands don't quite compete with the larger the larger brands Tissot, Longines, Hamilton, in this price point. But here, this really does offer a very real um, alternative to those watches. It's a simple um, uh, tang and uh, and buckle style of a style of strap, as you can see, with two keepers in this grey colour. It's very soft and then backed with very soft calf leather um, to, again, comply to the wrist very nicely. Uh, in addition to this, we have a, uh, a proprietary uh, buckle and, and, and tang, um, again, with the Vapaus logo uh, engraved into it. The case back is a very simple snap-on case back, and the reason for this was to, to shrink uh, the thickness of the watch once more. And, uh, and it, I suppose it is more true to the original 1950s watches, as a great deal of those had snap-on case backs rather than opting for a screw-down case back. Now, of course, today for most watches this doesn't make sense, but in this case I think it does to make this watch all the, all, all the more of a, a thin dress watch. Now, as you can see, engraved into the back we have Veli 2050, and then the sun shining down in these very minimalistic strakes um, to this, uh, this winged figure. I do like this uh, this futuristic sort of nod on this watch, um, almost a science fiction style on the back of this watch, and of course lined up with the uh, the length of the case uh, to to further emphasise this. Now I would have appreciated slightly deeper engraving, but with the fact that this watch has to be quite thin, I can understand why they wouldn't want a pressed logo or um, or pressed medallion on the back of this watch. Now onto the the movement. This watch features a Sleater SW215, which is a 19 dual manually wound Swiss made movement. And this is a clone of the ETA 2804 2, which is a movement which, uh, which is again ETA's answer um, to the, 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 the demand for a manually wound watch. So, this is a, a similar movement, though with more jewels than, than the movement included in the Hamilton uh, car key. Um, and and, and it's, it's, it's a fantastic movement, really. This is one of those movements which is very easily serviced but actually remarkably rare because most brands opt for an automatic movement over a manually wound one. Though in the pursuit of, of a thin case, I can certainly understand why this was done. 
Now, this movement is hacking and hand winding, as you would imagine, for a hand wound watch. Um, so, of course, the, the, the crown winds upwards to, to, to wind the watch and then can be uh, rolled back down to, to turn for a second, uh, second wind. But this watch has a, has a power of approximately 40 hours, um, which is nothing incredible, but, uh, but certainly will be fine if one wind, winds the watch every morning. Of course, we have the hacking, uh, the, the, the quick change date, as you can see. And then we have the hacking, as you can see here. And the hands are, are very easily moved around, and uh, there's no play in this, which I, I do appreciate, whereas a lot, of, um, a lot of watches do have a certain degree of play when you turn the crown. There really is none of this with this timepiece. Now, this watch isn't water resistant, or at least uh, I, I don't, I, I'm unaware of any water resistance to this watch, uh, due to the fact that, uh, that this watch is such a slim dress watch and has the pop-on case back. Um, so this watch is, uh, is going to be humidity proof, but, uh, but I wouldn't uh, do the dishes or, or swim with this watch as uh, it will likely uh, leak. Now, something I would like to talk about is this crystal. And, uh, and, and this crystal is very much something which was difficult to find for Vapaus and had to be commissioned specifically um, due to the, the, the rare nature. This is a 2.85 millimeter uh, crystal and, and do is, is uh, domed in the very classic acrylic style, whereby it raises quite abruptly here and then smooths over in a very uh, smooth and, uh, and, and, a, and a finish which one would usually see on acrylic crystals, though this is a sapphire crystal, um, as, as really this watch is bringing that classic aesthetic into the modern age. Um, and I do think this is perfect to catch the sunlight on that beautifully finished dial, um, which the have, uh, have implemented here. Now I'll just uh, put this watch on the wrist and show you how it feels uh, on my, um, uh, my six and a half inch wrist. So here we have the, the Vapaus Veli on my wrist, and it fits very, very nicely on my six and a half inch wrist. Now the watch is, of course, 38 millimeters across and has a lug to lug distance of about 45 millimeters, which may seem quite small for some, but for a dress watch of this type is perfectly suitable. Also, the strap is, uh, is so supple that it, uh, it really will slip around the wrist, despite the, the quite short lug to lug distance. So really, there is no problem there in terms of, in terms of wear. I mean, in my opinion, the proportions of this watch are really just about right on the wrist. Now, as you can see, the crown is quite small and doesn't dig into the wrist, um, though I think it would, it would be slightly easier to have an ever so slightly thicker crown for the sake of manually winding the watch every morning. Um, but that very much is a, is a nitpick for a, for a watch in, in a sort of teething stage or a brand in its, its early, uh, early um, uh, years. So on that basis, I'm very, very impressed with the wear of this watch. Again, the strap wraps around the wrist, and the buckle is very nicely designed to be very comfortable because it curves slightly to, in its form, uh, meaning that the, the strap doesn't, um, uh, doesn't dig the buckle into the wrist, which I found with some more, more, more sharply designed uh, buckles. Now, one aspect I would like to point out about the case of this watch is that though the case itself is rather flat, the lugs drop down very comfortably to meet the, the top of the wrist. And my wrists are, are quite flat on the top, but, uh, but I don't like too long lug-to-lug -lug distances. So really, the manner in this watch has been at which uh, this watch has been arranged is perfect for me, because these lugs drop down quite nicely around the edges of my wrist to give a very clean and comfortable fit. And, uh, and having shown this to a couple of friends who happen to be with me today, I have noticed that this watch does sit very well on most people's wrists, um, their wrists being very different and, and slightly larger than mine. Um, I have found that this watch fits them very, very well, just as, just as it does mine. So on that basis, this is a very versatile watch in terms of the way it fits on top of the wrist. Now, one aspect of this watch which I wasn't expecting at all, and which I've been able to test out in the dark. Now, this watch actually has a loom, which is this BGW9 style loom, which is, uh, is really very effective. Now, uh, I apologise for the small flashing light, as you might see in the middle of the dial there. Um, that's, in fact, the laser autofocus of my camera, uh, trying to, uh, to focus, but... Um, uh, it's, it's remarkable, it does a terrible job in the light, and yet it's very much able in the dark. And these strange things about these cameras. But back to the watch, um, the hands are extraordinarily legible in the dark due to this BGW9 treatment. Um, and one does have these, uh, these small it, uh, loomed uh, indices at 12, uh, 3, 6 and 9. Um, now though those indices do tend to disappear within about an hour and a half, um, the hands will glow, and in my experience have glowed for about, uh, will glow for about 4 hours. Um, which is quite remarkable really for a dress watch. I and mean, certainly would make this watch perfectly appropriate for a night, for example, at the opera or the theatre, and where you need to glance at your watch and just check the time um, in the dark of the, the theatre. 
So on that basis, I think this is a very interesting feature and one which I wish more dress watches had um, because they've managed to integrate this in a very unobtrusive way, but, uh, but still in a manner in which this can be effective and useful on a daily basis. Now I'll just turn the light back on and conclude the review. So with all these features, I must say I do think this watch is fantastic value at £699. And I do think at this price gives the, the, the rapidly um, uh, increasing prices of Longines um, and Hamilton a, a real run for their money in terms of the quality of the watches they can produce. And the, the classic simplicity of this watch really is remarkable at this price point. Now, I do think that manually wound watches are, are under, un, undervalued, and a great deal of people have asked me about manually wound watches recently. Um, as you will have seen from the, the, the manually wound watches um, video I made recently. But I certainly think this watch does hit the nail on the head um, with regards to, to what I would look for in a manually wound dress watch. So with that, uh, that beautifully sunbursted silver dial, or grey dial, and those, uh, those, those almost uh, Blancpain Bathyscaphe style hands, um, I really do think this watch is a fantastic uh, uh, bet and a really brilliant watch for the money. So I'll conclude the video there, so please do leave your comments down below as to what you think of this watch um, and, uh, uh, um, and whether or not you think it's a good suggestion. But, uh, but anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please do like, share and subscribe to help the channel enjoy more content. So thank you very much for watching. This is Arm on the Watch Guy, over and out.